On today's show, we are talking about is what you are watching on TV. Is it affecting your relationship? Have things changed from 20, 30 years ago to what we're seeing to what we're seeing now? Is there any impact on that? We're going to have a discussion around that. It might not be what you think, but we think it's going to be an interesting topic. All right, let's talk about it. Thank you for tuning in. We are Tristan and Michael, and you are listening to Fused Transparent Conversations for Marriage, Family, and Relationships. We invite you to join us as we discuss topics that are thought about but not talked about. So tell your friends and family to check us out. And as always, join us on all of our social handles, as well as looking at our website, FusedMarriages.com. Yes, ma'am. I love in the glasses today. Thank you, sir. I'm loving the hat. Appreciate it. You told me to wear it. Yeah, you have a hat. No. No. You, you I, said, hey, I have this hat on. Yeah. Should I wear it? Should I, I like, wear yeah, no, I didn't good. have it on when I first came in. When I, after I came in, I put it on, then I took it off. And he said, should I wear it? And you said, yeah, you know what? You look fly. No, you said, what is that? Look, you look cute. What, whatever you said. You're all of those things, babe. But uh, anyway, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go with what she said. So anyway, we're going to start off with just thanking you all for your support um, of our short form series, Pivot. Pivot. Um, we have appreciated all of your insights, your comments, your likes. Um, and those of you that have not yet watched them, please go to our YouTube channel and look at our Pivot shows. Mm-hmm. Um, as we have shared before, they are um, four um, four show season so mm-hmm. we have four shows and then we're off and then do the next four shows and then off so um please look at those let us know what your thoughts and we are hopeful that they're creating um really important and impactful conversations among you your family your peers and mm-hmm. getting us to think about things potentially in a different way yeah, so thank definitely. you for that yeah appreciate you guys mm-hmm. okay All so right. today's show yeah da-da-da-da. so yeah 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 so actually before today's show i'm gonna play a little game which leads into the, the topic of today's show Okay. Okay. So just go with me. I'm going to play a short clip. It's going to be some audio only. I want you to name the show. It's going to be a TV show. I'll give you that. Okay. But name the show. All you're going to hear is the audio. Is there any like parameters like comedy? It's, or... just, just name the show. This is like it's, super no, it's, broad. It's, it's broad, but we'll see how, how it goes. Okay. Oh, so I want great. you just to. If it's like naming musicians. No, you know no, 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 no. It shouldn't be. It's not that. It's not that. Uh, um, no, it, it okay. won't be that. All okay, right. I'm ready. Here's the first one. This is um, Come on. What you got? Five more seconds. <laughs> What well, <laughs> Five. Four. I want to say it's Cosby Show, but I think it's a different ding, world. Ding, 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 oh, okay. ding, 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 Perfect. Cosby, Cosby Show. show. Okay. So that was the first one. Good job. Good job on that. Good job. Okay. I got two more. It's the, you know what? You don't I watch all these shows, y'all, but right, well, I don't know what one. the other shows the are. One. Here's but. the next one. Got to listen. If y'all know it, y'all may, hey, y'all may be yelling it out right now. Come on, they're going to they gonna start pinging us on our channel. They're going to be like, I can't play this too long. Do y'all know? <laughs> no, I don't know. Go. Family Ties. Okay. Family Ties. Okay. You know me, Michael J. Fox? You remember? I mean, I know the show, okay, but... Okay, make a show. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, all right, all right. I watched it. All right, one so more. So I'm one for... I'm one in... Oh, okay. Yeah, you one out of three. Just okay. You need to be one out of two. One. That was two. Okay. Yeah, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming right. you're getting the next one wrong. Okay. But you may not. You may Rude. not. All right, here we go. Rude. <laughs> here we okay. go. Last one. Is it a TV show? Yeah. You think it's a song? Somebody just said this. You think it's a track? Oh, there you go. They said it. Oh, it's Night Rider. It is Night Rider. Yeah. Well, you were right. You assumed I was going to get it wrong. I assumed you were going to get it wrong, and I and, and I was I was I was kind of right. Right. You're all that, the way right. That, that, that you got it wrong. So I got one. So we had the Cosby Show. Yes. We had Family Ties. Yeah. We had Knight Rider. Uh-huh. All those shows that came out in the 90 time frame, right? Whether it's some Cosby Show went on for a while, but like yeah. it came out in the, in the like, 90s. Okay. And they were all, in my opinion, relatively good shows, right? Mm-hmm. He had other good shows that were like maybe like he had Saved by the Bell. Remember that? Remember that show? Bell. See, I, I, you could have played that one. I would have got it. You might. I don't know. That was kind of hard. Because it's Saved by the Bell when yeah, I wake up say, every morning. Yeah, they do say okay. they do say the title. Mm-hmm. You had, you would have got this one. I was saying this. You had the Fresh Prince. Yeah. Everybody oh, would have sure. got that one. You know what I mean? That's kind of yeah. a classic. And one that was kind of really like, in my opinion, that was really, really funny, that was different, um, was In Living Color. 
in living color. Yeah, that was and that, uh, to me, I love that. It was just a different spin off show. of how you know comedy and different stuff. But they did a good job on that. All right, so or a different world. A I don't different know where world. you're going with this, but yeah, it's a different. That's a good one too. World That's a good one too. Yeah. Okay. I'm but ready. to me, all those shows have like kind of a. They were good shows in my opinion. You know I mean, maybe not because mm-hmm. I just grew up with them, but they had some de- decent content. Even the ones that were action. Mm-hmm. Action pack, or they were around teens or around adults. Yeah. They still kind of had a theme of like, well, hey, you know what? They're trying to help somebody, trying to figure out something, trying to promote something. Yeah, it was. It was, in my opinion, it was fairly positive images okay. that, that were portrayed. Even the one show that kind of got—I was a little bit older. I say older, maybe in high school, was nine hundred two one zero, and they dealt with some kind of edgy stuff, maybe with some some drugs. But they were still trying to help out this that, and the other. And they were, even though they're privileged kids, they were still trying to show like, hey. They still normal, got normal issues, normal kids with normal problems. Mm-hmm. And hey, we're just like you, just maybe to, even though we have more money. Mm-hmm. But they had decent, you know, decent content. Um, so with that being said, today's mm-hmm. topic is what I want to suggest, at least we can have a discussion around, okay. um, is what you see affecting your relationship. And if it is, how is it affecting, affecting relationship? Okay. So what you see on television, mm-hmm. and I'm taking the stance of that, hey, if, what we were seeing before affected us in one way is what we're seeing now, at least what's available or how mm-hmm. we're consuming. A lot of people don't even watch TV. It's a lot of YouTube, a lot of, you know, shorts. Yeah. I hear my, uh, our eight-year-old daughter talking about, Hey, Lee, you see, look at the shorts. I'm like, what? What's like, that's have, that's like TV for them. Phone. Yeah. 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 That's like TV. For okay. But is what you are watching, is it the question is a question. Mm-hmm. Is it affecting your relationship or how you interact with people in the world? Okay. So I'll start, I'll start with that and give your thoughts. I kind of set that up for you it's a little bit. It's interesting because this is almost like um, a new spin on is life imitating art or is art imitating life? That's a good point, yeah. So I think that this this could be um, an interesting dialogue. So we invite you all to join in mm-hmm. with us because as I'm considering that, I'm, I'm, I, I think it does play a part in mm-hmm. what we – I mean, I think anything that we see – is going to influence our behaviors. And Mm -hmm. especially if we ingest it and we, we meditate on it and we think about, Hey, what is this? Or if you watch like a romantic movie and you say, Mm -hmm. Oh, I want my spouse to be more like him or, or her, or I wish that they did this. I think that it definitely influences how you connect to your spouse. Um, my question would be to what degree? Yeah, no, that's, I think, I think that's what we're going to maybe try to least, maybe we can come to understanding how we, What's affecting what, right? Is life imitating art? Is art imitating life? Uh-huh. That's always been a conclusion or at least a question, right? When people, I go back to my days where, you know, when this West Coast rap came out, they were like, no, no, no. We just showing out here what's what's going on. Mm-hmm. And people always argue like, well, hold on. Well, can you paint a different picture? <laughs> it's like, it's kind of <laughs> like, at least, oh, can you balance it out a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. With it, you know, and they took the stance of like, hey, you know what? No, this is, this is real. Mm-hmm. And uh, people have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. So that's a that is a question that comes up oftentimes of what is doing what is driving is driving what I don't know if we can solve it but because I don't know I don't know if I think that sharing <laughs> your experience mm-hmm. if there's anything necessarily negative about it I think my problem is when we hyper focus on only one perspective and mm-hmm. then there's no okay. other ones to say this is this person's experience but somebody that might look like them or come from a similar background might have another experience and i think that that happens a lot in black and brown communities it has a lot happens a lot in various religious communities where people mm-hmm. are clumped in into saying you are like them because of this. Mm-hmm. I remember during 9-11 when everybody that was um, of Middle Eastern descent mm-hmm. was all clumped into, you all think this certain way. Mm-hmm. Or during um, when we talk about um, politics, like, okay, well, because you're mm-hmm. black, you're also this. Or, hey, you're from the South, you act like this, or you say these words, or you live on a farm and ride horses. So mm-hmm. I think that our natural propensity may be to try to make um, – like homogeneous, like kind of systems where, okay, now I can put you in a category. The problem with that from my perspective, particularly as it relates to media is that there's um, groups of people that capitalize on marginalizing Mm. and um, only captivating one type of person and saying that this represents all of these, all of this group of people. Mm. And that's That's why diverse content to me is really important and then that also is reflected in our relationships because you see 
oh, this is how this is how men should be because right. I, I watch this. I watch, you know, I watch the Jeffersons and this is what I this is how a man should be or this is how a household should be right. instead of saying, well, here's an option right. and here's an option and here's another experience. Um, and then even with those asking your spouse or partner, what do you think about that? What did you grow up watching? Yeah, I don't true. know if you remember we did this and we did this exercise and it was like who um, and we I um. I think early we might have we may have done it with some of the people that came through at some of our premarital classes, but we asked, "What show did you think represented your family?" Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? I think we, yeah, we I said, that. "What show that. do you think That's was closely related to your family? Like, what characters did you connect with when right. you were growing up? Right. Either idealizing or mm-hmm. idolizing, like." this is what I wanted it to be or what was it that you had in your home? Because there's a very different, um, there's a big difference in the household that may have been Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I grew up like the Martins or like the fresh princes, or if I grew up like the family matters, like, you know, there's a big, there's a big difference into how those homes are run. Um, and so I think that that, at least informed how I viewed relationships. So, this, I mean, this is an interesting topic. For one, we're actually in the media creation, yeah. content creation business, right? Where some of the things we deal with are maybe kind of like a little risque, right? As far as like maybe alternative perspectives of people. Yeah. Right? So that kind of may always puts us in a category of like, well, you know, what are we portraying? How people are taking it, this, that, and the other. But I think we try to be that counter side, right? Of yeah. a lot of times, right? Of saying, hey, Here's what maybe you're seeing, but here's another perspective of maybe looking at this type of person. Yeah, and I think it's really important, and that's why at least the two pieces of content that we produce now, which is this podcast, but also our short form series Pivot, Mm -hmm. I think are important because the goal of Pivot is to show different perspectives, different people in different situations, Um, but also of this platform where people may see us as like, you know, a married couple Mm -hmm. and we try to talk about some of the things that affected us, some of um, the things that have influenced us, some of the challenges, Mm -hmm. like those that have watched our platform for a while know there was a long period of time where I know I was, and you can speak for yourself. I was Mm -hmm. like, what, what did I do? Like, why am Mm -hmm. I here? Like, this is not, this is, this is not what marriage is supposed to be in my mind. Um, and then trying to reconcile that with what this is, what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is, can I break this commitment? Should I get out? Like, how do I, how does that affect me? How does that affect my kids? How does that affect my community? And really kind of battling some of those things, but without those conversations, you're able just to look at any couple, not just us, obviously, but looking at couples and saying like, Oh, well they must kind of have it together or, Hey, I want a marriage like them, like <laughs> pump the brakes. Like you might not, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So no, no, ab- absolutely. And be- it's before we transition, I want to get into some questions Okay. around the idea of what we were watching on TV. Does it affect right? Mm-hmm. Our relationship? Before I do that, there was actually an, a, uh, a clip I found on ABC Mm-hmm. About um, and it's your first time hearing it, so you're gonna hear it for the first time. It's okay though. It's my it, first time hearing that. It is your first time. Too. <laughs> it's, it's, your, it's your first time hearing it. Okay, but it I think it is it, it brings up some additional questions around the psychology of how it's affecting it. Okay. Okay. Um, let me get a second. I'm gonna get it to play. Thirteen Reasons Why is a show about teen suicide, and one of the concerns that a lot of people have is, does exposure to images or shows lead to increased suicide? And for kids that are vulnerable, giving them exposure to detailed methods can lead to increased suicidality. Now, if a person isn't already contemplating suicide, they're able to watch a lot of the programs in the media and find it educational or informative, but it doesn't necessarily lead to suicide, unless the person already had suicidal ideas. We find that after celebrity die by suicide, there is an increase in um, suicide in the years following. We saw that with Robin Williams' death. In the years following, there was a 10% increase in suicide, particularly in um, uh, men under the age of 40. So the reason why I played that clip, right, so it's, this is a psychiatrist, right, mm-hmm. really talking about a show. It's Kids Can't Show Me came out maybe four or five years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And it was about... I remember teen, it. Mm-hmm. You remember, okay, it's about teen suicide, and there was a concern about what does that do with people and how do they process it, right? <clears throat> with that being said, so she's saying, yes, if you have some kind of lean toward maybe that thought or that type of ordeal or that issue, it could affect you. It could. If you don't, then it, it may not. But the question is, we don't know who the people are that it's affecting, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody says they're okay. 
I'm fine, this, that, and the other. And, but these things or these images are out there. So I bring that as an argument of at least a discussion point to say, hey, there's at least some data out there that says, right, and talk about the Robin Williams whenever he, we, he went through his thing and we saw that and people, this has a 10% spike up in male suicides, death, whatever. Um, and taking out the suicide aspect of it, just making it a broader discussion around is what we see affecting us, right, and how much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, Absolutely. It affects you. But I also don't think that that means that we shy away from hard conversations. Mm-hmm. I think that that, that that sort of narrative can cause us to pendulum swing and be like, well, we're just not going to talk about any of it. And mm-hmm. it's like the same thing that the church does when they say, well, we're not going to talk about sex because if we talk about sex, it's going to make people want it. True. Well, <laughs> so then you ignore it and then you have generations of people that are you know, experimenting in bathrooms and trying to figure out like things about their body and they're trying mm-hmm. to you know hide pregnancies and you know becoming yeah. promiscuous because nobody's even talking to them about these sorts of things so i think that it it becomes dangerous when we don't talk about mm. things and i don't know if one um supersedes the other i don't I, but i do think that there has to be a very honest conversation yeah. about real and hard topics i think that it if we're going to be talking about things like that um really getting into the narrative what what causes these? What what are what are some risk factors? What are some mm-hmm. things that we can take note of? Um, and then again, I guess to the the point of the um, therapist is who is the target audience for these conversations? Is yeah. it contextualized in a way that they can understand that it benefits them? Mm-hmm. Um, because I do think like you know from the times perhaps that some of us were growing up, there's been a lot of shifts in society that now we have to address sooner. There were lots of things that we didn't have to talk about when we were kids. I could go out on the street and, you know, play. I could walk down to my my friend's house that lived a block away and it not be like somebody is going to come and put me necessarily in the back of their van. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that I did. I wasn't aware. Like we had McGruff homes. Did you guys have that? Oh, uh, I don't remember it. If I did, you lived kind of in the country though. So. I lived. But I didn't have anything. <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> so like I didn't have much. Well, we had McGruff homes, and I don't know if that's still a thing, but it was like basically safe homes that if you felt mm-hmm. uncomfortable, then you could go to these homes. And I was taught mm-hmm. awareness. Okay. I was taught like. Hey, you know, you look over your shoulder, you, you, you don't just, you know, you're not just lollygagging outside, but it wasn't, I couldn't walk across the street and not be concerned. So now I think that society has changed in such a way and we're spiraling in such a negative way that now we have to be much more aware um, and I think some of that needs to be reflected in what mm-hmm. we're seeing. And some of it is, you know, sens- or, um, sensationalized. Some of it is just, yeah. you know, it's kind of glorifying some of these things. Yeah. So I think it's a balance. What do you think? No, no, good, good, good input, good input. I think, I mean, I, I'm not going to agree. I didn't know what my grew up. I thought it was actually was like a toy or something you were talking about when you started describing I'm like, oh, <laughs> actually like a safe place I'm like I'm sorry those that grew up know. in the city I don't I know if know. you had McGrove yeah. home I, it, they ring his bell a little so, you started talking about it, I'm like I kind of remember yeah, they have yeah. a little dog yeah, yeah. sticker in the window yeah, yeah it kind of so. lets you know it's a safe spot okay mm-hmm. I kind of mm-hmm. remember that but yeah so I apologize if I offended somebody that didn't anyway I don't yeah. know if they're around they should be but yeah. again they, that's a safety thing do you want a kid going into a random right. person's house right. you know so so I, I did want to jump into these questions though okay. just no. a little bit um and it's focused around again. What is what you're seeing on TV? How is it affecting relationships? Right. Mm-hmm. So the first question is, I'm gonna put this up for you. Uh, what types of relationships are being modeled on TV today? And it's, let's say if, we, if we're comparing it to what we maybe come about the Family Ties, Family Matters, uh, the Cosby shows. Um, I think the only one that maybe kind of a little bit risky. Maybe we had uh, Married with Children with Al Bundy and his family. That was kind of more of a comedic approach to it though right with the kids and any other um but yeah so is what's what's being modeled today what's being modeled today on tv i don't know from relationships i don't standpoint. know if there's i'm trying to think of positive <clears throat> family content but i think mm-hmm. that the media is shifting so much content is really really kind of it's all really short form it's it is the you know the tiktoks and the quick shorts mm-hmm. and things like that so in terms of what's being seen it's almost individuality is being seen more than mm-hmm. more than community more than social atmospheres and even that is projecting it's not just kind of showing us hanging out it's us you know hanging out on the beach with our wine bottles at 
you know, mm-hmm. 15 or whatever. It's not a, it's not a, it's not necessarily what's real either. So I think that there's something that needs to be done in the media so that all of us and yeah, children and adults alike can yeah. really see like real conversations about life and relationships yeah. and what the good and the bad. Cause I'm, I'm struggling to think of some of those. What are those shows that we watch and we enjoy together, whether they're dramatic or comedic? Yeah. I just like, I agree, I agree with you on that. I don't know if there's anything that even jumps in my mind as I, I wrote the question. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a show that I can say, you know what? Yeah. My kids can watch this. Right. And maybe get some value out of it and kind of maybe just get a picture. Maybe what, how a house is, is, is what, what it looks like, right. With the good and bad, right. Kind of maybe yeah. different perspectives of that. Now, you mentioned something about social media. Now, there are some things that we do see on social media. Like streaming and stuff. It's like streaming or mm-hmm. people just posting, like, you know, maybe some of our people that may look up to that are in entertainment or sure. sports. They kind of post stuff with their spouse that we get a chance to kind of see and maybe call it TV, but at least we're seeing it saying, okay, hey. But even this those, is a positive I image. don't, are those formatted shows? Or I don't are think they they're formatted. Of, no, I think, it, like you said, it's changed. Yeah, it's but changed I think maybe that how that's, it's being consumed. I think that that's the thing. Like, there's not many kind of formatted or mm-hmm. scripted things that people can enjoy. And then everything is so hypersexualized that to enjoy, like, a family show. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, do you remember TGIF? I remember the, the restaurant. I love that restaurant. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking about. There was, no, there was on Friday nights, there was, like, a series of, like, kind of teen bop shows that mm-hmm. would come on. Mm-hmm. It was, like, four or five shows I don't remember how old I was. I was older, but Mm -hmm. there were like four or five shows that would come on, you know, cable television that you could kind of sit on a Friday night and watch Mm -hmm. about two or three hours of television. And it was all kind of teeny bop, not, not challenging, you know, necessarily your norms. But when I think about things like that tonight, today, there's not, there isn't, there isn't content like that that can be easily consumed and digestible and enjoyable Kind of almost regardless of your of yeah. your age. That's not to say that there isn't any, but I'm hard pressed to kind of just sit in front of the television and let it play through anything, even if I'm streaming. Right. It's hard to kind of find content that both adults and children can kind of middle of the road enjoy. Unfortunately, now you're right because I'm thinking like even with our kids, you know, whether it's Disney Plus, no shame if they're going to be one of sponsors or anything like that. But like even they're even like we have to monitor that right what's being shown on there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, kids too, right? This is kind of the kids friendly, uh, quote unquote, kids place for in like a YouTube version for kids. Even that has to be, we gotta be like, okay, hold on. What is this? What are you watching? Yeah. I don't know. There's like, there's not much of a like, okay, Hey, this is going to really feed in. This is some positive values. Yeah. Parents have to be hyper aware, but I think for their children, but I think you, we also have to be hyper aware for one another, the kind mm-hmm. of things that we ingest because we are, we will watch what our kids watch just to make sure. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes we'll just kind of let it run in the background of our lives. What we're watching, mm-hmm. like we'll watch a whole lot of shows and not think anything of the 30 sex scenes that were just there mm-hmm. or how, often a character kind of showed up buzzed or drunk or you know like it's like almost these shows are pushing us to um, a different space in what we think is normal Um, and they get like a lot of the shows that I can think of get good ratings Um, but is that necessarily what's best for us as a society because it's Mm -hmm. again it's not to say we should not have certain conversations and to be entertained and to watch Mm -hmm. things that um you know kind of pique our interest but should everything kind of be this extreme version of society without the balance of what is love not just what is sex but what is what is love what is love without so much pain and drama like what would Mm -hmm. it be for a character to experience love without being cheated on you know like Mm -hmm. that that's part of a lot of our stories but what does it look like to have a different ideal you know so anyway just so i want to close with this but i have a theory maybe we're going to close for the next four or five minutes whatever but okay (laughs) it's gonna be you know it's a preacher (laughs) you're on the clock the clothes i'm gonna close like yeah you know but the clothes how much what's how long is your clothes on it (laughs) But I'm going to close with this. So, and I have this, this quote, at least from this article here, mm-hmm. and it's a paper that came out in April of 2012, right? And it's from the issue of psychological science, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll frame it up, but it suggests that changing the way people see something can also influence their, their skill, right? Mm-hmm. They were talking about, so in, in, in this article, they were talking about, hey, if you see a way, let's say you, you have to climb a mountain, 
and in your mind you see it like, hey, this is a really, really steep mountain. Mm-hmm. It affects how your skill is then tied to how you approach that mountain. Okay. Right? You literally start taking on like, okay, can I make it? Is my backpack, you know, light enough? Mm-hmm. All this, these things that kind of come extra versus saying, you know what? I see this mountain as something I can get over. Mm-hmm. I say that in the aspect of I think there's a reason it's going to be a, maybe a stretch, but go with me. Okay. <laughs> it's like maybe a stretch. The reason why, you know, people are, are not getting married at an early age anymore. They're waiting until like 30 plus, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know the stats on it, but I know it's a little bit later than what it was maybe 30, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make the argument, or at least I'm going to make the suggestion, okay. of people are getting married because of what they see. They're seeing the negative aspect of what marriage brings, how hard it is, how much pain is involved, and that's in their mind. It says, you know what? I can't climb that mountain, or I don't want to climb that mountain. Mm-hmm. And saying, you know what? No, marriage is not for me. Are there other factors? Maybe, right? With school and education yes. and maybe just, sure. you know, society, how things are working. But... I would like to suggest maybe that is a factor, right? Of what we've been seeing, at least with say this generation that's coming up, they haven't been seeing. They didn't see the Cosby Show. They didn't see Family Ties. They didn't see Family Matters. They didn't see these images of like you know what Little House on the Prairie. Maybe that's a little far back, but <laughs> but the idea. Um, <laughs> I don't know where, I don't know where that came far. from. I don't know where it came from, y'all. I just thought anyway, but they didn't see. They didn't see any of this stuff. Uh-huh. And the fact they didn't see it, and now what they see now was like, it's the negative side of it. Girl, don't you deal with no sorry this that, and the other. Do you know what? She ain't nothing but a cheating or whatever, whatever have you. Mm-hmm. You know what? These kids gonna drive you crazy. Mm-hmm. All that's tied to marriage, which is tied to family. Mm-hmm. And is there attack on family from that aspect that causes people like you know what? I don't want to do family. Mm-hmm. That's a whole part of the different discussion. I didn't maybe hopefully the connection made. I made it. I don't know. But I, I, I let you discuss you. these last three or four minutes on your thoughts on it. Um, I don't know if I would say that that's the reason, but I do definitely think that it's a contributing factor because mm-hmm. positive images of marriage neither exist in in television or necessarily in communities. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not we don't have now as many um, family gatherings where people are getting together and they feel connected to something. They feel connected to aunts and uncles or friends getting together over other people's house that have children. And we have friends that have kids and we, Mm -hmm. we do this and we enjoy it. But these things being what are the norm, like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might have had like, after Sunday afternoon, everybody kind of comes together and everybody brings a dish and you all kind of just eat and, and spend time and you feel connected. I think that as a society where we are feeling more disconnected, Mm. social media does play a part in that. Um, and, but I think ultimately it is our responsibility to make connections to, to say, you know what, I might not be able to, you know, do a lot of things in the social media space or to necessarily impact the world to make a shift. Mm -hmm. But if I impact my corner of the world or the, my, my realm of influence, then I am in a way affecting the world because then I am allowing my friends and my friends, kids to have a safe space and my children to see something that they can also emulate and model to say, Hey, this is, Hey, I know I see my parents, they're still together. They've pressed through and it's not pressing through just trauma because that is something that some of us saw that were like, nope, we're not doing that. But pressing through and saying, oh, they had some challenges, but I saw them talk it out. I saw them um, come back to love. I saw them, you know, pray about it. I saw them have meetings about it. I saw Mm -hmm. them do what it took to make sure that that challenge didn't become the relationship. And so then we're, we're saying we're modeling family and we're modeling love and we're modeling Mm -hmm. marriage in a way that we don't necessarily see in other spaces. So well said, well said, that's it. Well said, close us out. Then I love it. I love it. I think I agree with you at least most of the time. (laughs) And this time I would say, I love what you just said and added in closing it out. And that that matter. I appreciate your honesty. Hey, most of the time, y'all be saying, you know, we got different perspectives sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes.
<laughs> well, we would love to hear your perspective and what you think about this topic. Do you think that we are being um, influenced by the media and what it is that we see? Um, and if so, how? Let us know. But thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your likes, your comments, and subscribes. And we just ask that you go ahead and follow us on all of our social platforms, as well as checking out our website for more content and resources, Fuse Marriages. Dot com. As always, let's talk about it. Like a